Hey there everyone, welcome to the Cult Life channel and podcast. So we are kicking off a brand new season of the show, but with a slight difference. The audio will still be available as a podcast on your favorite podcast app, but the video format will be available on YouTube for those of you who like to spend your time on YouTube. So make sure you hit the subscribe button to be notified when new episode is available. Um, yeah, so follow us. We are still in a pandemic and I was one of the unfortunate ones who contracted the virus last year in 2020. If you would like to know how that went, there's a video also available on this channel. So with that being said, let's get into today's show. It was a very peaceful place. The people were exceptionally open and friendly. Our lives were socially, religiously, economically revolved around courses of our mission. You had to confess your sins regularly, at least once a week. Then from there, you go to the hall where they cook for all the visitors. You will see a whole lot of people that seem content and at peace, but that's just because they have to be. Children were punished severely. The fear of God was tangible. You could touch the fear of God. I recall him then pressing my head into the grass. And uh, I just recall feeling pain and feeling like I was going to die. It was a house of horror. It was such a friendly place, but now the mission has regressed into a full-time cult. That clip comes from a News24 expose of a church here in the outskirts of Durban in KwaZulu-Natal, here in South Africa. In September of 2020, a 50-year-old Christian mission in KwaZulu-Natal came under police investigation and came under scrutiny for allegations of wide-ranging abuse, gross human rights violations, um, and of course turning a blind eye to sexual abuse and there's also been alleged money laundering uh, spanning four decades. So far the mission's political connections and economic power has helped it avoid scrutiny by law. Kwasiza Bantu mission goes back quite a long way here in South Africa it was, um, it was started in 1970, uh, it was founded in 1970 by South African evangelical and revivalist uh, preacher Erlo Stegen. It was built in a rural area of 540 hectares of land. It is one of Africa's largest missions with thousands um, of worshippers. Now, the mission has come under scrutiny after a report by South Africa's News24 network alleging widespread misconduct by church members and by some of the uh, leaders, including human rights abuses like rape and beatings. The church has also been accused of acting like a cult. News24 interviewed former members of Kwasi Zabantu over a period of seven months. As the story unfolded, more and more victims came forward with tales of abuse. This led business partners of Kwasi Zabantu and its affiliates to either cut ties or suspend their dealings um, with the mission. 
Wasiza Bantu has faced um, allegations of virginity testing young girls, underpaying workers on various farming projects that they were involved in, and cutting off families from each other. Um, before this has happened before these allegations, but so far the mission has largely avoided scrutiny by the law. Kwasiza Bantu used to have branches in Germany and Switzerland. However, the Swiss and the German uh, churches uh, cut ties with, with its South African uh, parent uh, organization uh, in 2019 after accusations of embezzlement, uh, of donor money, um, and so forth. So the mission, however, is also a multi-million euro business. Kwasiza Bantu operates numerous farming companies on its premises here in, in uh, KwaZulu and Tatel. It's got a, a plant, for example, that supplies the Aquile uh, bottled water brand to some of South Africa's biggest retailers. The mission has also been accused of not paying salaries to staff working on its projects. Nicole Engelbrecht, uh, which was a producer of one of the, one of the South African uh, South African podcast True Crime, says people at Kwasiza Bantu headquarters were allegedly being forced to work basically as slave labor. A few labor court cases um, have been shown as proof of these allegations, which are quite uh, quite disturbing. Close ties with the apartheid South Africa's military intelligence um, is also alleged. A former church member, Kurs Grief, revealed that during the 1980s, he was an informant for the government to help apprehend enemies of the apartheid state at the time, or uh, some of the so-called ANC terrorists, which came to Kwasiza Bantu. This meant people on the run from the state at the time were welcomed to Kwasiza Bantu and given refuge, only to be arrested by the apartheid authorities uh, in the middle of the night. Sources on both sides have corroborated uh, these allegations, according to News24. So while Kwasiza Bantu claims to be diverse and open to all, Adrian Basson is unconvinced. He says, when you speak to people that grew up there, white and black people, it very quickly becomes clear that at the mission there was also an apartheid. There was also separation. The black kids stayed in very poor dormitories, whereas the white kids and their parents stayed in better accommodation, um, for example. Kwasiza Bantu's leadership has repeatedly denied these allegations. They've repeatedly denied it. In the beginning, uh, the mission's popularity and power were a result of the charisma of its leader, Erlo Stegen. And if you listen to some of the recorded sermons of Erlo Stegen, you come to realize that he was actually quite a very charismatic speaker. And I agree with uh, what Nicole Engelbrecht uh, said, that South Africa's so-called socio-economic uh, issues make the country a breeding ground for cults. Um, remember, the Christian religion was the basis of South Africa for many, uh, many years. The high levels of unemployment, um, drug addiction, um, and so forth, when people are really in that place uh, in their lives and down and out, and they are struggling, they are actually, and they are desperate, it is so much easier for them to be drawn into uh, an organization that promises them the world. Um, but you need a leader if something happens to you uh, to help you to speak out. Uh, then others will follow uh, and will have the guts to come out as well. They just need that little push, uh, says Engelbrecht. And then the other characteristic of cults course is fear. The whole thing boils down to fear. Fear for your life, uh, fear for Erlo Stegen, the leader, and if you're not afraid, then you don't belong. And then you try to get out, and then they start the maltreating you, uh, she says. Kwasiza Bantu also nurtured ties, ties with local and, and, and national leaders. 
the longtime leader of the Inkata Freedom Party, um, Mangasuta Butelezi, a very influential figure um, in the political sphere, uh, admitted to having close family ties to Kwasi Zabantu. Even former President Jacob Zuma's mother worshipped at the mission. So there's definitely a lot of power uh, in this mission, uh, in this church. Uh, they have definite links to politicians and to senior and powerful uh, people uh, in KwaZulu-Natal especially. There's the ultimate devotion to the cause. People have allegedly been cut off from their families, which is another attribute of an abusive cult. And then there's the psychological and physical manipulation and abuse, which has been alleged. Kwasi Zabantu has released a videotaped statement asking victims to come forward and assist in a probe into the allegations of wrongdoing. The church was dragged in front of the CRL Rights Commission towards the end uh, of last year, 2020. And of course, the church has denied all the allegations tabled against it. News24 has a four-part podcast series that I recommend you listen to to get an in-depth understanding about the mission and the testimonies of survivors. That's the show, folks. Please don't forget to subscribe uh, and hit the like button. Uh, be part of the conversation uh, in the comments. We'd love to hear your feedback. We'd love to hear uh, you interact with us in the comments. And you're, let's, let us know your thoughts about the show. Until next time, bye for now.